Hi everyone, welcome back. We have another reaction video for you and I'm so pumped about this one because I'm reacting to Alanis Morissette. She is on Harper's Bazaar on their Go To Bed With Me series. Okay, Alanis Morissette is basically my 90s teen years wrapped up into one person. I'm gonna be very nostalgic watching this just because there are just so many things about Alanis Morissette that she represents for me in my life. She was in a show on Nickelodeon called You Can't Do This on Television. I'm definitely aging myself by bringing that show up. I used to watch that show. Whenever anybody would say, uh, I don't know, and they'd be very like dramatic about it. It was a sketch comedy show. They'd be like, I don't know, like that. And then they'd get slimed. So the Nickelodeon slime that you see on television, like whenever they have any kind of like slime in their logo and everything, it actually comes from this show that Alanis Morissette was on that was just a sketch comedy show when she was younger. So she started off, uh, as far as I remember, on this show. And it was a Canadian show that got moved on to Nickelodeon. And it really was so popular when I was younger. And then eventually she went on to be being a singer and she started off as a pop singer, which a lot of people don't realize, and then eventually made the shift into alternative music. And in the 90s, alternative music was huge. And that is when her career really blew up. And that's how we kind of know her is Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill, Isn't It Ironic? This is the Alanis Morissette. So I'm really excited to watch her because this is just gonna be a very like nostalgic 90s moment for me to, to just hear Alanis and hear what's going on in her skincare routine. I will leave a link below to the original video on Harper's Bazaar if you wanna watch that. But let's get this started. Your skin is my hashtag skin goals. So soft and yummy. Okay, come to bed with me is the invitation, but let's not get crazy. Every single time I am doing one of these reactions and I hear someone say, especially when they're younger and they're like, it's time to go to bed with me. I'm like, it's no, we're not. Don't go there, okay, little one. That's what I think sometimes. And so this is definitely mom mentality. It's like, let's not get crazy, okay? First thing I discovered in Los Angeles. Wait, okay, also, can we zoom in on this background? She basically has an apothecary in her bathroom. That shelf is wild. It looks like a lot of oils to me, so that's very telling. Now I'm like, okay, so 18 step nighttime skincare routine. I wonder if there's gonna be a lot of oil. This a while ago is this Dr. Alcatus cleanser. It's one of those cleansers that when you do it and you wash it off, your face squeaks because it's so clean. I like squeak. I like to massage it in. Then I rinse it or wipe it off with a cloth. Hold on. And while I'm rinsing, I have always used this chamomile gentle eye makeup. Okay, so first, squeaky clean. Remember, it's just a term, so maybe her skin isn't actually squeaky, but if it is, we don't want that. You don't want your skin to be too clean where it's actually stripped. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You don't want to set the tone of just stripping your skin from the get-go. But when it comes to the cleanser that she is using, let's talk about this. People ask me about Castile soap all the time. And I think it's because Dr. Bronner's is really popular. I'm not a big fan of Dr. Bronner's. This is truly just a bias of mine in some ways because I haven't really try to use this as my cleanser, but the reason why I don't use it isn't because of the Castile soap, but because there are like a million ways to use it and that's how they tout it. And I just don't wanna use something for my face that you can use to clean your floors. When it comes to Castile soap, people think that it's a lot better for your skin and they think it might be a lot more gentle for their skin because it's a plant-based soap. The thing to remember is that just because it's plant-based doesn't mean that it's gentle or that it's safer for your skin. The reason why people might want to avoid Castile soap in their skincare routine is because it can be very alkaline and you don't want your skin to be alkaline. You actually want your skin to be a little bit more acidic. When your skin is a little bit acidic, then you have a healthy skin barrier. And when it's a little bit more alkaline, then it starts to get a little bit more out of whack. And that's when you sometimes have a damaged skin barrier. When you have a, a cleanser that's a little bit more alkaline though, you can actually just go ahead and use products that will balance the pH of your skin and you'll probably be fine if that's what you do for the rest of your skincare routine. So you Usually it is fine. This cleanser on the other hand is something that I would maybe consider because it has so much going
going on. Yes, there are essential oils in this. This has a lot happening. This has a natural vitamin A complex. This has a natural vitamin C complex. And at the end of the day, I would have to try this cleanser to really tell you my full opinion about it. Anyone who goes through a, an ingredients list and says, oh, you, this is gonna be a terrible product, knows nothing about formulation because at the end of the day, it's all about that final product and what it does for your skin. So you always wanna keep that in mind. The real reason to look at an ingredient list is because you wanna find maybe an ingredient that you want to avoid. That's truly the reason to look at an ingredient list. It doesn't tell you that much more. Makeup remover from Body Shop for 20 years. When Anita Roddick was alive and Body Shop in the 90s was super popular. And so I've used them. <laughs> Little eyelashes coming out here. They're not real, nobody worry. So I've used a ton of different eye makeup removers over the years. This one's great because it, when it gets in your eyes, it invariably does. Um, it doesn't sting. Chamomile dental eye makeup remover. And it feels like water, so there's no oily residue. And thankfully it hasn't been discontinued. Almost everything I love product-wise gets discontinued and then I cry myself to sleep. Okay, makeup free for reals. Not the fake makeup free, but the real makeup free. I think grooming is a massive part of self. I just have to give it to Alanis. She not only represents my 90s teen years, but now she's also bringing up the body shop, which also represents my 90s teen years. I should do this whole compilation of just what the 90s meant to me. And the body shop was one of those Things. I feel like the body shop has become, you know, a mass brand, but back in the day, the body shop was the shit. Like that was the place that you wanted to get your cool products from. We would get catalogs and you would look forward to getting your catalog from the body shop every single time because it was like a mini magazine. And the body shop was one of those first skincare brands that really brought attention to sustainability and being eco-friendly and giving back. All of their products were all about giving back to the communities where you were getting these ingredients from. So they would really spotlight like a social issue that was happening in you know the country where they were getting this one specific ingredient that was the focus of their product or something. They really brought attention also to natural green products. And I wanna say like really at the end of the day, they are the OG green brand as far as like when it comes to the mass brands like the ones that became big household names if you guys don't know the product i was obsessed with from the body shop was their mango body butter that was that was my go-to and i loved everything banana from them as well as far as this product goes totally fine to use a washcloth afterwards to remove all of your cleanser and it's also a very effective way of removing all of your makeup if you're not going in with a true double cleanse the oil cleanser first and then a water-based cleanser the one thing i want to point out though when people use a washcloth you can be a little bit too rough and i do think that she was being a little too rough especially like in the eye area when she's using this to remove her eye makeup you know you definitely want to be a little bit more careful there you want to be a little bit more gentle because some of the tugging that she's doing can be contributing to loss of elasticity. For some people, it can cause hyperpigmentation because it causes inflammation. So you just wanna to remember to keep that in mind. You want to be gentle if you're gonna use a washcloth. She points out something also that I'm sure all of us deal with, and that's when your favorite products are discontinued. There are usually one of two things happening when your products get discontinued. One, that product just doesn't sell and people are not interested in it anymore, so they get rid of it because it's just a drain on the brand. Or two, it's actually such a popular product, they want to like kind of come back with it and give it like a bang. So they just switch up one ingredient or they like change up the packaging or they introduce new colors. So they discontinue it for a second. It's a way of marketing, which is not a bad thing. I don't think marketing is a bad thing at all. Marketing is all around us and it's what gets us excited sometimes. Marketing can be dreaming, you guys. Think of it that way. It's not always bad. It's not always meant to be a getcha. The thing to, to know about that is they'll reintroduce this product that was really popular and now people are really sad that they didn't have it anymore. And now everyone's really excited and they've done some little change to it. And it almost makes it feel like a brand new product and it gives them a launch. And then a last note. I love that she pointed out that she's really taking her makeup off. I love seeing that. I love a confident woman. And I've said this before in past videos. I feel like one of the best things about aging is that you start to become 
really comfortable with who you are. And that honestly, for me, has been one of the best things about aging is that, you know, yeah, I do notice that my skin's not the same. Yeah, I do notice that I have some wrinkles and everything, but at the same time, I'm so much more confident in who I am as a person, as a woman, and even in my looks, I just feel so much more confident and I love that she's going for it too. Okay. So before I do it, I may feel kind of off. And then as soon as I get into this ritual, if I have time, it does literally give me a boost self-esteem wise, just that I'm worthy enough of caring about my skin and worthy enough of taking the two minutes, 22 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever it is to clean and to care. I use this probably. You know, she makes a really good point that this is, you know, she does her skincare routine to remind herself also that she is worth it. The reason why I think that's a very important message is because sometimes I feel like we feel like we need to be really rigid with our skincare routines. Even watching these reaction videos, it's like, you know, I see all these comments. It made me stop loving these reaction videos for a second. And one of the main reasons why I took a break. Our skincare routines are about us. What do they do for us? Not just for our skin, but what do they do for us as a whole? And that's what I want you to remember. There was somebody in our private Facebook group who was like, well, what do I do if I end up at a guy's house and you know, I can't take my makeup off? And it's like, live a little. That was my response to her, live a little. Obviously, if this starts to become a regular thing, then get smart about it and have like some backup, you know, cleanser and moisturizer at the very least with you, like maybe sample sizes. But think about the excitement, you know? I miss those times sometimes. I'm like, oh, the excitement of meeting somebody and you don't know what's gonna happen. But really at the end of the day, it's like we do all of this to love ourselves. And I think that's what we want to remember and get back to when it comes to skincare. Enjoy your skincare. Don't feel like you have to be so rigid and you know, do what it is that makes you feel good. Once a month when I feel my skin getting kind of ruddy, and I can literally feel the thickness of the dead skin on the top layer. So I do this before cleansing. Um, let me just put a little amount. It smells like alcohol a little bit, so you know there's, you know there's alcohol. <laughs> what happens with this is that as you rub it on your skin, it exfoliates. You can't really see it, but there's a bunch of dead skin that I can feel. It feels like this is a scrub right now. I just keep going until I have exfoliated as much of the top layer dead skin as I can. As I can. And then I cleanse that off. I never really feel totally cleansed until I clean my face twice. Another cleanser that I love is the brightening. Okay, so she brings up that she only exfoliates when she feels like it's like once a month when she feels like she's feeling ready already and she can feel almost like a thick layer. And my whole thing is I don't think you really want to get to that point. Like you want to have just enough exfoliation happening and for everyone that's very personal. The ingredients in here aren't going to do that much. There's alcohol in it, like she said, but it's one of those things where it's at the bottom of the list. It's there for, as a solvent. It's probably not doing much and she's also rinsing it off. So I wouldn't even think about that. This is really, this is a gommage. She's manipulating it with her hands and she's getting that exfoliation. I think she'd see better results personally. If she exfoliated like this at least once a week, she'd probably see a, a, a bigger difference. And maybe she wouldn't feel like she needed to cleanse so much too, because this is kind of what I'm hearing is that she really likes to get squeaky clean, but then she's only exfoliating like once a month. So maybe it's more like a little less cleansing, a little bit more exfoliating. Cleanser by Indy Lee. It's got that same hyper cleansing effect where your skin squeaks a little bit when you're done cleansing. Circular motion. <laughs> You could do squares and rectangles too. I don't really think it matters. Okay, soup's clean. People ask me how to take care of my skin once in a while and I'll just say clean, oiled. Okay, I'll be right back. So, so we saw her cleanse use the eye makeup remover, then go in with her exfoliator, and then go in with another cleanser. By the way, I really like this cleanser by Indie Lee. I love Indie Lee, by the way. She's, she's a really sweet person, if you've ever heard her story. Backing it up a little bit. So she went in with a cleanser after she exfoliated, and in some ways, it's actually completely fine in this routine. I don't want to confuse you guys. I know I say exfoliate after you're done with your cleanse, but the exfoliator that she used didn't really have any active ingredients in it. So in some ways it's like, 
Was that wrong? It wasn't wrong. There was nothing wrong with what she did. If anything, she's just overly cleansing her skin. She doesn't really need to. I can understand going in with another cleanser after that gommage because it probably leaves like little bits on her skin. And so in her mind, she's like, okay, I want to cleanse that off. Not really much wrong with it, except that it's just overly cleansing. And, and now her skin is a little bit red. So she started off with what looked like to me pretty clean skin, but she's after that squeaky clean. And that's probably the overall, like if there's anything wrong, and Alanis Morissette in my eyes can do no wrong, but you know, to be fair, she's probably over cleansing though. You don't want to strip your skin. You don't want to be over cleansed. And she's even admitting that like she, like when she talks about her skincare routine, it's all, it's all about being cleansed and oiled. So now I think we're about to go into the oiled portion of her skincare routine, just looking at the back shelf. Tammy Fender products I discovered a few years ago because I got pregnant with my first son and I wanted to use products. Anything I put on my skin goes in my bloodstream kind of understanding. So I wanted to use products that were all really clean. Lord knows I still use products that have um, things in it that I can't pronounce. Um, but over the years, I've just sort of progressively gotten rid of products with this long list of ingredients in the back. This is the uh, Epi Peel. We don't want to mess with the oceans with those beads inside a lot of um, exfoliators. So these are uh, ocean safe. Sometimes when I use them, it almost feels like it generates heat. And I think part of the charm of scrub, besides removing dead skin cells, is also that the blood runs. Take care of the little micro, micro violence, <laughs> micro skin hurtings. There's a real word for that, but I can't think of it right now. So really rubbing it all in. Neck, décolleté. I thought it was décolletage, but it's décolleté. Okay, and then I wash this off. Be right back, BRB. When I'm on the road. Okay, so actually it looks like she does exfoliate her skin a little bit more regularly. Again, it's a very gentle exfoliator. I guess I take back a little bit of what I just said. There are a few things to unpack here, so one, is it is confirmed, Alanis, you over cleanse your skin. You don't need to have skin this clean. Now I'm looking at what she's using as exfoliators. And this one is more of like a clay-based exfoliator. It feels minty. You know, they claim on this product that the mint will be your natural exfoliator. And yeah, there are some, there's some truth to that, but you know, this isn't going to be like a big bang for your buck kind of exfoliator. Really, it's the clay that's going to work for her to help exfoliate her skin. But at the end of the day, this is really just, in my opinion, another cleanser. I'm sure it feels beautiful. It has some hydrating and moisturizing ingredients too, so it helps to balance everything. And she's gonna rinse it off. So, you know, it should be a fine cleanser. But now at this point, in my opinion, what I've seen is that she's just cleansed her skin a lot, like maybe four times have we seen her cleanse her skin. So you don't need to cleanse your skin this much. It can be very stripping for your skin. And what you'll end up finding yourself doing is having to really work hard to replenish your skin after that. And you just, you just don't wanna do that. You know, you could cause potential irritation that can lead to hyperpigmentation. It can cause dryness, so then you get flakiness, and then you're in this whole cycle of trying to fix your skin. So that's something to keep in mind. You do not want to overstrip your skin and over cleanse it. The other thing I wanna point out is that she brought up when she got pregnant, that she started to become very aware of you know, using natural, clean ingredients and everything. Whenever I hear a mom say that she started to become very aware of her products and what she's using because when she was pregnant, she didn't want anything going, to, going into her bloodstream and stuff. I don't know if people realize like the emotional impact of being pregnant. You're very wary of uh, you know your child and keeping that child safe and everything and you know i see all these different arguments on both ends like why you should be using clean ingredients and then people being you know upset about you know this kind of stuff and calling it a fear-mongering tactic but what nobody's thinking about is that there's this middle ground and we need to have a productive conversation especially for women like alanis for women like me i know a lot about what goes into our skincare products and ingredients and what's considered safe i, I still felt an emotional reaction, I guess. You know, when you're told that even ingredients that are typically safe to use in your skincare routines cannot be used while you're pregnant, you suddenly are very aware of everything. And you start to be scared because I know for me, I was an older 
pregnant woman and I'm an older mom and you know you're just trying to avoid anything that you can that's gonna harm or affect your baby and your pregnancy so there is like an emotional response to all of this and I and I think that people don't take that into account on both ends I think that there needs to be a more productive conversation happening here or we'll never really get ahead and we'll never be able to help pregnant women out because you know who are the people that have major skin issues pregnant women and I'm falling asleep sitting up like a horse because I'm so tired or I'm um, just at home <clears throat> and I have no time to clean to this degree. I use these. It's from a woman named uh, Narayan and I got it in Ojai, California. Wait, Narayan is a rune, my husband's father's name. I don't hear this often. Yeah, at a farmer's market, but she's online. I sort of intermittently spray myself with some spritzers. This is like every dermatologist's worst nightmare type of product. I maintain you have to try the product to see how it actually is on your skin because the formulation does matter. But this is where, you know, dermatologists come in. They're like, you're wrong. Don't use this on your skin. This is the type of product that could potentially send somebody in to go see a dermatologist, not because it's dangerous, but because it could irritate your skin. And that is because it is aimed at people with oily, acneic skin. But it is really all just a bunch of natural ingredients that are mostly essential oils that could actually just irritate your skin. Skin, especially because this is the kind of product that would sit on your skin and you're also using it in a pad type of format so you're rubbing your skin and can you imagine when you have acne or you have oily skin you tend to rub harder because you do think that you need to like overly cleanse your skin so I can imagine that this is the type of product that would cause a person to feel even more irritated and potentially even have more breakouts she didn't use it and I'm glad because she's already over cleansed her skin so I'm glad that she's just pointing this product out I'm sure it smells lovely but this is where I maybe would like pump the brakes a little bit and say like let's not use this too regularly and it also makes me wonder what her skin type is now because we're going all over the place. And usually on the Harper's Bazaar, they do start off saying what their skin type is. We can obviously, you know, put together that she has more mature skin, just like I would say I have mature skin at this point. It's a little bit reactive, but I wouldn't say that it is a sensitive skin because she obviously uses a lot on her skin and she's looking like she's fine. And it looks like she probably has dry skin, which sometimes comes with having mature skin. So it's interesting. Now, now I'm like, what type of skin does she have? I really want to know. Um, this is one of my favorite 1111 Sacred Rose Water. Aura Cleansing Mist by Logan Hollowell. I also do this at night, certainly for skin, but it's good for uh, when being when I'm super hormonal. Oh, it's just so nice. And then I like it, I mean, I don't know if it's smoke and mirrors, but I like the idea of just intermittently spraying once in a while just to kind of lock the moisture in between products. The other spray that I enjoy. Interesting, I didn't know Logan Hollowell had a aura cleansing mist. I actually am a fan of Logan Hollowell's jewelry, so I had no idea that this was going on. Now I gotta like dig deeper after this video. You are getting hydration. This is a rose water mist. And yes, there are some benefits to this, but really this is just aromatherapy. You get hydration from the water. Is this something that I would say to use throughout the day? If you wanna feel good and you wanna have that kind of a scent around you, sure. If you wanna get extra hydration, this is not going to give you that extra hydration if you don't lock it in. So this is not something that you want to spray on your skin regularly to lock in your hydration and moisture. It will give you hydration because it has water, but it's not going to lock anything in. You would then have to go in and lock in that hydration. What I'm using is uh, Eminence Organic Skin Care, the Stone Crop Hydrating Mist. There's something about this smell that, well, it's Hungarian, first of all. I'm 50% Hungarian. And this company was started two years after my mom escaped during the 1956 revolution. And she and her family were gonna go to Australia. Uh, but my grandpa stepped out for a cigarette, missed the boat, literally. And uh, when he came back in, the only place that they could go while they were escaping was to Canada. So I have a cigarette to thank for my life. I am not condoning cigarette smoking, but Hungarian, um, Stonecrop Mist, amazing smell, and my girlfriends and I keep it in our purses and spray each other because that's real sisterhood. So I do love vintners. You know what, I start to realize when I watch these routines, like, people are really into their spray toners and they really go to town 
using their spray toners. I guess I'm just not that person to always pull out a spray toner. Not that I'm against them and I have used spray toners in my videos in the past and told you how much I love them. The Eminence brand is really popular with spas. It's a spa brand and you know, usually it's estheticians that will recommend this. So we're getting hints that she goes to see an esthetician on a regular basis because of this product being in the lineup. This one's a little bit better than the Logan Hollowell one in that it does actually have some skincare benefits to it. It's a little bit more brightening. It is a little bit more hydrating. It does have have some stuff that it will do for your skin. Again, for this one, you would have to lock in any of that hydration with an actual moisturizer. So always remember that. For the most part, you have to lock in toners with some kind of a moisturizer. Daughter, this is the active treatment essence and this is the active botanical serum. The essence, you can feel it tingling on the skin where the tiny, tiny um, dermabrasion parts are from the scrubs. So I throw the essence on, or rather languriously apply it. And then I do the Vintner's Daughter Serum right on top of it. And this smell is amazing. Complicated, but not overwhelming. Something I noticed about products that are really expensive, um, a lot of the times there's like, there's a secret illuminator in it. And you know, we wonder why our face is glowing. It's because there's an illuminator in it. The great thing about oil is that you have that kind of shiny, dewy, youthful, vital thing without any um, glitter. Although I am a big fan of glitter. Use anytime and not sparingly. One of my favorite- I am so glad that she's using Vintner's Daughter because I get a ton of questions about this brand. My quick response to this brand is, I think that these are great products and I think they do really work. But let's get into why they work. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they are organic or natural or that they utilize oil. And I think a lot of people associate that with why these products work. The reason why this brand and the two products that she mentioned, the reason why they work is because they're utilizing ingredients that we know are effective ingredients. And these are ingredients that you can get in even simpler products because the ingredients list on these are really long. It's like they took every ingredient that we know in skincare and put it into two products. Let's start with the essence. So the essence, for instance, is essentially a vitamin C with some niacinamide and some lactic acid in it. In this case, lactic acid is being utilized as a hydrating, soothing ingredient. This is just your typical vitamin C with some niacinamide in it, right? There are a lot of other ingredients in it and I'm sure they help in some certain way, but really at the end of the day, when you look at this, that's what you're getting. This is a vitamin C serum with niacinamide in it. We know that these are great ingredients. Do you have to spend almost $200 for it? No. My esthetician, Vanessa, you guys hear me talk about her all the time. I love her. She's obsessed with that essence, by the way. The other thing I wanna point out really quick with that essence is we heard Alana say that she can feel it tingling in the areas where she was exfoliating. And that's not a good sign because I don't think that this product is supposed to feel that way. And if she's only feeling it in the areas where she's, you know, like really exfoliated, that means that she's confirming essentially that she over cleansed and stripped her skin. And that's where I don't want you to get with your cleansers. And then moving on to the serum, if I could only choose one of the two, I would go with the essence because it has those ingredients that I really love. The thing with the serum is that it is an oil, right? There are tons of different oils in here, but if you really look at the oils and the benefits that you're getting from these oils. First off, it has a lot of oils that are high in linoleic acid. The main oil is grapeseed oil. That is great for people who have acne prone skin, who feel like they have oily skin. If there are any oil based serums, I guess that I would recommend for you, it would be this one. There is evening primrose oil. It's really great for balancing your skin. And then there's also rose hip seed oil, which naturally has vitamin A in it. And we all know what vitamin A is. That is your retinoid. So it's a gentle form of it, sure, but you're still getting those types of benefits from it and sometimes people only need that very gentle skin cell turnover and stimulation so sometimes you don't need to go with like a tretinoin right you're not going to get the same kind of benefits but for people who are first introducing this kind of a product into their skincare routine they would see these benefits and not understand why they're getting these types of benefits but that that's kind of what i see with vintner's daughter is these are products that work and that's because they're actually utilizing a lot of ingredients that we know are effective in skincare favorite i uh creams is actually the eye sun peptide eye cream i only have a tester right now because i ran out of it this one feels great for me it's about how things smell certainly how effective they are in what they say they'll do but also 
how they feel. And do they absorb into the skin well? A little pet peeve action for me is when I put moisturizer on, it just sits on the top layer of your skin and somehow doesn't penetrate. Sometimes, sometimes that's just because my skin <laughs> is so dirty that there's nowhere for the product to penetrate into, but sometimes it's because the product itself just doesn't have a, an absorption thing going on. But this one, oh, it's another good smell. So the Peptide Eye Sun Eye Cream, definitely a fave. Also use um, the cucumber. All right, so eye cream. I'm actually a big fan of peptide eye creams. I mean, this one has a lot going on though. It's not just a peptide eye cream. And you've heard me say this. If you're going to use an eye cream, I personally like to use an eye cream during the daytime underneath my makeup. That's where I see the, be the biggest benefit because my makeup doesn't settle into my fine lines and wrinkles. But if you're gonna use one at night, I like for it to be a treatment, a very targeted treatment. This one has a lot going on. It's not just peptides. There's even a vitamin C derivative in here. There are a lot of different extracts to help brighten the eye area. So I can understand why she likes this one. I don't know how it feels, but she makes a really good point that the way that skincare feels is very important. And that is truly one of the things that I look at. You guys have seen me do first impressions videos where I'm just really, I'm feeling the products. And that's how these products even make it into the next round of me even wanting to give it a try is it has to feel good to me. Not absorbing because your skin is dirty, not necessarily true. You do definitely get better penetration if you exfoliate regularly though. She also pointed out that the smell is very important to her and I want to just put a little highlight on that you guys because I think we get stuck in our own little bubble of people saying that they don't like fragrance. Why is there fragrance in skincare? Well, here you go. A woman who presumably is a very wealthy woman who loves her skincare, as we can see in the background, she spends her money on, on skincare that smells nice. And this is what happens is it's not always about the people who want fragrance free. It's sometimes about the people who, are, who want the actual fragrance. So keep that in mind too. There are people who definitely love it and it's important to them. Rose Penny Francis Apothecary Eye Serum. If I'm in a rush and I just wanna do a little Sometimes I'll do this after my makeup too. My makeup will be on and then I'll, I'll just do a tiny bit of oil around my eyes, just a smidgy, just to get that kind of reflective dewiness that we're chasing so much. See naturally here. So now at this point, she's just getting into like oils on top of oils and like more oils and oils. And I think because we're not finished with the video, not even really close, we have like three more minutes left. I have a feeling also from her background that she's just gonna put on more oils. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning. So she, I mean, she said it, she's cleansed and oiled. So she's really like now going in with replenishing after all of the cleansing that she did. It's funny to hear her say that she puts on this oil, especially cause it has a rollerball after she does her makeup, because this is the kind of thing that would actually just remove your makeup in that situation. Like the oil would break down the makeup and then on top of it, she's using a rollerball to do that. Very organically, I would just be spraying my face again. Oh, that's so good. 11, 11. My number is actually 1234. I see 1234 AM and PM 10 times a month. I have a couple of other favorites. You know what my numbers are? 8881, because it's my birthday. <laughs> but those are very magical numbers, apparently. 8881. So she's going in and she's hydrating between all of her oils. I'm not sure what kind of benefit you're getting at that point because you have all this oil on. At some point between your steps, you can definitely hydrate. I think you're more getting the benefit of like the scent of it, again, the aromatherapy versus the actual hydration between all of these oils. That I won't use because of my face will be so oily. Um, but this is a huge favorite of mine. African Botanics Neroli Infused Marula Oil. Yum. So I would put this on as well. I know that uh, there have been many teachings over the years to kind of stick with one main set of products. I have never been able to do that because I'm high novelty <laughs> and I need variety. Um, when something works, it, I'll use it for forever, decades. But, um, but I like to mix in new things um, just to shock or surprise my skin into submission. <laughs> oh, sorry, what did I just put on there? Tata Harper. This is the... Um... First, I love African Botanics. That was the brand that introduced me to Marula Oil. It was not Drunk Elephant. African Botanics is the brand that I remember bringing Marula Oil into the mainstream. And when I say the mainstream, at least that's what I, that's, that's where I was introduced to it. And I love the founders. They are this sweet couple from South Africa. They are so proud of the culture. Um, they really care 
about where they're getting the marula oil. They really are just so proud of what they are doing and you know, giving back to the land and to the people that they that are harvesting all of this marula oil. It's honestly been like years since I've talked to them, but they are such a sweet couple and they really are. They love what they do and they are very proud of their brand. And it is such a beautiful brand. This particular oil with neroli in it. it has such a beautiful scent to it and back when i was a beauty editor and i was using this i used to drench my face in this oil i don't think you should do that you only basically need a couple drops of oil and then you just pat it into your skin you actually shouldn't be dripping it can get into your eyes and become irritating and all of that kind of stuff you only need a couple drops of oil that's what makes oil nice marula oil is very healing for the skin it has beautiful fatty acids for the skin it is a little bit richer for people that have acne prone oily skin you probably want to skip the marula oil and stick with more of like a squalane but this is a beautiful beautiful oil and this is the brand that really introduced marula oil to me and to i think to all of us you know, she brings up something that I think is in a lot of us, and that is that she likes to have variety when it comes to her skincare. And that seems like an understatement of the year because of the background, right? Then we know that she's got a ton of products. I think a lot of people like to use a ton of different products and switch things up. Can that be bad for your skin? It can be if you're not paying attention to what's irritating your skin. She said that she likes to like shock it. You definitely don't wanna do that to your skin. And the reason to move slowly into introducing new products into your skincare routine is so that if you do have some type of a negative reaction or some kind of irritation, you can then pinpoint exactly what it was. Oh, it was this product because this is the only thing I've changed in my skincare routine in the past two weeks. I guess one tip that I have as a person that does introduce new skincare products often is that I try not to make such a big switch in the types of ingredients. If I'm gonna try a new vitamin C, then I just stop using the current vitamin C I'm using. And so the ingredients tend to be very similar and I'm not making too many harsh changes, but I like to only introduce one new product a week. That's the French side. I can do the French side. Soin illuminant, hydratant pour le visage, which means illuminating moisturizer, with diamond radiance. But this is great under makeup or on its own. And it has a nice little reflection with uh, lights on stage or otherwise, sunlight even. So another. So up until this point, I would have said that she's pretty much going in the correct order. When you put on this much oil and then you put on a moisturizer right after that, it's probably not gonna do much. This is an illuminator in a lot of ways. So I actually wouldn't recommend putting on an illuminating moisturizer at night. Is it gonna be terrible? No, but it does have ingredients that I think are best left for daytime. I mean, it's probably fine, but only because sometimes those kinds of illuminating ingredients can be a little bit pore clogging. I'm not saying this is. Not at all. I'm sure this is a very beautiful moisturizer, but I tend to like that kind of a, an illumination in the daytime anyway, and she's putting on so much oil, it's not gonna really moisturize her skin and penetrate or anything like that because she, she has all this oil and water-based products don't penetrate the oil very well. Fan favorite, i.e. me, loving, uh, is the Marula Neroli Serum Concentrate Elasticity. I think there's a theme here. A Neroli, huge fan of Neroli. So this one, once again, too, it's just how the product feels on your skin. It's a multi-sensual experience. I also like to cover the top part of my lip. Because when I'm doing this all day, <laughs> it needs the break. Lips. Okay, so she just put on more marula oil, essentially. So at this point, she's just flexing. She's like, I've got my really nice, fancy products and I'm just gonna keep putting them on because I can. A point though, because she has somewhat more mature skin, she's not old at all. But when you get a little bit older, you can handle more. You guys hear me say I have dry skin. I am leaning more towards drier skin as I get older. And that's just because it's, it's what happens as you get older. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can put on more and more oils and creams and stuff as you get older. So she can technically handle a little bit more moisturization than somebody who's 20 years old. That said, now that, I, that we've confirmed how much oil she is using on a regular basis, I would encourage her to exfoliate a little bit more, maybe not cleanse as much, only because when you are using this much oil, you almost need to exfoliate a little bit more to make sure that you are getting all of it off of your skin, I guess. Classic Burt's Bees Mint Peppermint. 
I use this on stage, in bed, all the time. Um, if I'm not up for the mint vibe, which is never, because I love mint, um, I will sometimes use the Osmia, Osmia, am I pronouncing it properly? Lip Doctor. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Uh, shea butter in that, I can taste it. And then I always put oil on um, at night. Like something about jumping in bed and my whole bed smelling like lavender and yumminess. Um, there's chakra oils from Living Libations. Nadine Artemis uh, has been my essential oil mentor since I was 18 or 19, I think I met you, Nadine. Anyway, she's the real deal. Freaks me out how talented and how um, savant-like she is. But this is the third eye in the Chakra Synergy blends. And I'll put it anywhere. You know, they always say trigger point, trigger points or um, points, meridian points. I just put it anywhere I want, basically. And then I have a bunch of sprays that I spray all over my bed. And sometimes I just pour oil <laughs> so that I jump into the bed and it just smells like a giant spa. But I think that's it. Let me think if there's anything else that I do at night. I mean, there's a lot of things I do. <laughs> but skin-wise, no. Um, thanks. All right, that was Alanis Morissette. She is beautiful. She is perfection in my eyes. We have to point out a couple of things. She's definitely over cleansing her skin and she's definitely putting on a little more oil than she needs to. But at the end of the day, if you want to do this in your skincare routine, do this in your skincare routine. I think it's all about having the conversation, knowing if you really need these types of ingredients or why they're working for you or not working for you. That's really what these videos are about. She obviously can handle this. Her skin is fine. For me, what I really got from this was, for her, this is all about her self-care moment. She likes for it to feel like a spa and smell like a spa. I mean, I was like looking at the robes, for instance, like her silk robes in the background and what she was wearing and everything. And I was like, I think I would like this vibe too. And I want to be like this. So, you know, when we have these conversations, it's not to say that this person needs to change their skincare routine. It's so that you can look at what they're using and you can figure out if this is going to be something that works for you or if you don't really need it. Because at the end of the day, when we watch somebody, we're like, oh, I, I kind of want that, right? Just like I'm sitting here saying like, I want some of these things too but it's all about being educated and knowing why we're buying something. And sometimes buying something is really just because, because we like it. And there's nothing wrong with that too. So again, that was Alanis Morissette. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Tell me who you want to see me react to next. You can find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.